Hi everyone, welcome to this press conference for Avengers Age of Ultron. Please welcome Joss Whedon, <laughs> Elizabeth Olsen, Jeremy Renner, Mark Ruffalo, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Paul Bettany. That is a lot of Avengers. And because there's a lot of them, and there's a lot of you, and we don't have a lot of time, we're gonna go straight to you for questions, skipping me for once, and we're gonna start with this gentleman here in the front row. Thank you. One of the biggest summer movies out there. But when you have a movie like The Avengers, which is part of something else, something bigger, does that make your job easier because you have things you don't have to answer that you can set up as well as pay off? Yeah, easier and harder. I mean, there's restrictions. And, um, uh, but yeah, a lot of the questions have already been answered. Um, uh, so it's, uh, you know, going in that you've got what you've got to work with. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a comfort, actually. Yes, please. Jump in here on the right. Hi there. Um, I've got a, uh, a question for my son, who's uh, 10 years old, for the Avengers. Um, he would like to know, um, before you start filming the movies, um, what's the thing you get most excited about? All the Avengers. All the Avengers, okay. if that's okay. I'm starting? Yeah, just okay. right. <laughs> um, I get most excited by um, cooking and eating. <laughs> okay, big <laughs> runner. <laughs> I'm excited about hanging out with these degenerates. Who's next? Mark Mark. Wait, is it? I'm, I'm sorry, I skipped my turn. No translator. Yeah. We're we're in England. <laughs> um, coming back to the coming back to the world and seeing where these these crazy people that we're playing are, are headed, and knowing that, uh, that Joss is going to take us there into his own twisted psyche. <laughs> Probably my first costume fitting, me surrounded uh, by many uh, full-length mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll say a similar response to Jeremy. Uh, Marvel has a great job of bringing a lot of the same people together, not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera. So coming back together as, as a group, it kind of feels like a family. It's a lot of familiar faces. It's like a, you know, like a high school reunion or something. I didn't understand the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as soon as you said cooking, I, I was like, she doesn't get it. <laughs> she misheard. <laughs> and uh, Scarlett? Scar Joe. Um, I did. Uh, watching you eat. <laughs> so excited because nobody else does. Um, I uh, guess I, I would say I get most excited about reading Joss's script because it's so it, it's it's like um, it's the big payoff after a long wait, and also all of the letters that pre the cover letters. Yeah, the, the cover letters before the scripts are just they're as good as the movie. Yeah, they're so delightful. <laughs> And self-deprecating, oh, yeah. and kind of thoughts of suicide. Yeah, um, so that's my favorite part. Uh, I'm just excited to be, um, you know, yeah, no, to be a part of it, you know, and uh, to be uh, that Joss uh, brought me along with on this journey and uh, to this fantastic group of actors. Box office bonuses. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> There's that. Uh, the gentleman here in the red tie. <laughs> they have, wait, are they coming before the movie starts shooting now? And, That's how and by the way, you oh, no. got box office bonuses? <laughs> <laughs> right, gents and ladies, um, we've got the Avengers assembled in London. I want to say, if someone asked me, what do you think of Avengers Age of Ultron? Fantastic. But if I answered the question as Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr., I'd probably say, not bad, could have been better. Uh, but good movie. Uh, two questions. One is Joss Whedon. Ultron is a great villain. Did, was that an easy decision to make, to cast Ultron as the main villain, or was it a long thinking process? No, no, I, I, I said we should have Ultron in the second movie before I uh, decided to make the first movie. Um, he's 
big, he's powerful, he's angry, he's metal, uh, he's strong enough to take these guys on, and um, there was, uh, uh, he's been angry for so long that I think he, he might be a little unhinged, and I, <laughs> I, I can write that. <laughs> and my second question is, you guys inspire a lot of people around the world. If you go across the panel, who go, when you guys are growing up, who inspired you? Who, who are your big idols? I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Should we start with Paul and then work our way back down again? <laughs> oh, oh, John Lennon. Um, inspired me in, in what way? In our characters or? Uh, um, I, know, I think Gary Oldman's uh, one of my sort of inspirations as an Sorry, actor. And Gary Oldman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm um, Patrick Swayze in Dirty Dancing. <laughs> I think we can all agree with that. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I was gonna, I was gonna go like a different way, and I was gonna say my old man. Oh. No. I, well, I was gonna say that's that, to me. That's you know, that's you know, who I am as a man. That comes first, I suppose. Peter O'Toole. It'd have to be Gandhi. You did. <laughs> Ben Kingsley. <laughs> and Ben Kingsley. <laughs> I've never seen my pop. Um, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and Faye Dunaway. Mm. Oh, yeah, you definitely Yeah, that happy those moment. were the girls I liked. It worked. <laughs> and, uh, and Joss, that's, that's spread it to you as well. Okay. Who inspired you? Uh, Chris Evans' dad. It's weird. <laughs> So I just didn't know him, <laughs> just sort of felt yeah. his presence. You could all learn from Megan Taylor. Uh, next question is the lady in the fourth row with her hand up. Yes, please. And then this gentleman. Hi, um, I've got a question for the girls. Um, how empowering does it feel to play two female superheroes in such a male-dominated universe? And I suppose you had a bit more prominence compared to the first movie. Was that intentional, Joss? I'm different what in compared to the first one? There seemed to be more prominence of the female characters in this one compared to the first one. Was that intentional? And how did like, the female, like Scarlett and uh, Elizabeth feel about that? And how empowering does it feel? How empowering is it? Empowering. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was just, you know, I just go through the script and, like, skip through and see, oh, Black Widow, there she is, and there, there she is again. Um, those are the only parts I read. Um, but, uh, no, I, um, it's, it's it, what's great about playing this character is that she's based in, you know, something deep and something that I could like, hold on to. She's grounded in something very real, um, which is, you know, this kind of, I think she has experienced a lot of trauma and she is, you know, sort of, um, she's, she's never really been able to be, um, to kind of make active choices for herself and now, and now she, she finally is and now she's, she's ready for it and uh, unfortunately it's just kind of a bad timing. But, um, you know, these, these kinds of things are, are something that we can hold on through, onto so that when we're you know, fighting the good fight and shooting five eighths of a page over you know two weeks, um, it kind of keeps us it keeps us involved and you know keeps our keeps our head straight. So uh, that's you know I'm looking at it just from an actor looking for material that's something that I you know that's substantial, not just a female actor looking for substantial work. But thanks, Joss. <laughs> Anita <laughs> and uh, Elizabeth. Um, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just still thrilled just to be part of this whole group and world. It's, um, it's a franchise that I've been watching since the first Iron Man, and I think they've just made such... <laughs> that was like ten... Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, they make such great films that have such a balance of of depth and humor and action and um, and that's given, but they're all um, humans that have weaknesses and um, strengths. And especially in this film, I think there's a there's a special highlight on everyone's own personal worlds and lives and what makes them human. So I think that's what makes this this film so great. And it's just it's just amazing to be part of this this cast. It's mind-boggling. <laughs> Uh, there's a gentleman here in the front row, thank you. 
I'm, I'm sorry it's been 15 minutes since my last wardrobe change. I'll be right back. <laughs> 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 Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> yes, please. Hi, guys. Great movie. A uh, couple of questions for Joss. Um, what's next for you apart from a long rest? And do you see yourself returning to the Marvel Universe one day? Um, uh, I don't think I'll ever get that far away from it because I love it so much. Um, uh, after my long rest, I plan a longer rest. Um, and possibly an eternal rest. Um, <laughs> uh, I have no uh, pl immediate plans, uh, which is the best thing I've ever said. Uh, yes, please. There's a gentleman in the pink shirt about six rows back. Thank you. Uh, hi, I've got a question for Scarlett. Um, obviously, your character could have easily just been kind of written off as the sexy one of the team. How important is it that really? you... Really? <laughs> have you seen Chris Hemsworth? <laughs> How important is it for you that she's actually smart as well as hot? And are you livid that there's not a Black Widow film yet? Uh, how, how important is what? That she's really intelligent as well as being sexy. And are you angry that there's not a Black Widow film in the works yet? Um, I, yes, I don't know how to answer that. She's furious. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, think, I'm, I think one of the really, uh, the, I think one of the qualities in the Widow that I, that I um, love and am interested in is that she, um, you know, is, she's, you know, when faced with this kind of, she's kind of put in the work and she's, you know, she, I feel like she's at a place where she's able to, you know, kind of um, uh, m maybe do something for herself and, and, and make this, you know, kind of maybe even have a relationship with somebody, maybe even open up in that way. Um, there's this kind of greater calling this this that that's that's pulling her and she very selflessly chooses that and it's it's heroic in a big way in a small way um you know she's she's really kind of in herself which is interesting because she also plays a character that's very i mean she also actually does play her she's a very kind of slippery fish for her job um but when you get her natasha she's in herself which is kind of cool um, and she's in her sexy self. Um, no. um, and um, yeah, a Black Widow movie, that would be cool. You know, I'm always happy to put the cat suit back on um, and get in front of all those mirrors, just like Robert, I'm an actor, so, you know. From your lips to Marvel's big, big pocketed ears. <laughs> There's a lady here in the second row, thank okay, you. My question is to all of the Avengers. Um, other than your own characters, who do you all think had the most interesting story arc in Age of Ultron? Wow. Should we start from the middle this time with yeah. Mr. Downing just and then spread out? Me again, because I'll just, I will this not understand like it. <laughs> Bad idea. <laughs> Whose arc do we like besides our own, correct? Uh, Hawkeye's got a heck of an arc this time. Yeah. And also, I, I think I can say from uh, us who have gone before that the, the arcs of, of what happens, obviously Paul has uh, a, a very interesting turn, and, um, and also with Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. I feel like Paul and Lizzie and Aaron came out and they exceeded expectations out of kind of left, right, and center field, and I feel like in, in watching the film, I was like, wow, that's in some ways is, is the big triumph of the film. That's a good answer. Uh, I, I really liked, I liked uh, Scarlet and Ruffalo. You know, it, you yeah. see a lot of nice, intimate moments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's my arc, really. It was the best arc in the movie. Um, it was just nice seeing, uh, you know, it was nice seeing the, the intimate moments between, you know, Scarlet and Ruffalo in this kind of like challenged relationship among a team of superheroes where you don't really get to see romance, you know, especially within the group. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Scarlet? Good luck. <laughs> Me? What? Oh, you're yep. up. Ah. You're up, Scarlet. Uh, I thought Joss's arc was really interesting <laughs> this time around. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'd probably um, 
agree with uh, with Chris. I uh, I, I think uh, I love to see. Uh, it was great to dive into Mark Ruffalo's uh, character. I think in, in the Hulk and just see such a sensibility in in, in that beast. And uh, I think there's a. Uh, it was quite an emotional journey in this one. So. Yeah. Uh, Hawkeye, I love the, um, I, 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 for me it was really the heart of the movie, I found it really m moving um, and, uh, uh, and he's fantastic in it, so, so there you go. And then let's go back the other way, Mr. Ruffalo. Uh, I would also have to say that uh, Hawkeye's storyline um, I found great as an actor who, who is off and away from home fighting imaginary um, evil guys <laughs> and a wife who's at home saying, where the hell are you and why aren't you here? Uh, I, uh, I really I find that I'm very sympathetic to that. Sorry. No, no, it's your, it's your storyline, so you already know it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're bored. I'm bored. No, I, I like I like them all. I'm not going to pick one out. I mean, I think it's a it's a it's a huge huge testament to Joss to to be able to write a movie to put all of these characters that are all extremely interesting and flawed and fantastic. And I think it there it's a, it's like a chessboard, and you think you need all these pieces for any of them to make sense. And um, I'm just very appreciative that we're able to uh, dive into deepen the characters a little bit more. You should totally have picked me, though, because I picked you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you, you, you. <laughs> and you're purple. <laughs> Joss, is this what it's like on set quite often? Uh, no, some of them are paying attention. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I feel like I help you wrangle things sometimes. He does. He helps. <laughs> sometimes. Right. <laughs> Back to you, Olsen. Yeah, um, I, I, uh, the Scarlet Ruffalo uh, through line I, I love. And um, my favorite moment is the first time we watch um, Black Widow talk down the Hulk. I yeah. just think that's such a beautiful moment in the entire film. I've seen that moment twice, and it's, um, I think that's one of my favorite parts in the film. Widow's kind of working way through the entire cast, I feel like. Yeah. Who's next? Who's next? Sexist. <laughs> Slippery slope, guys. Slippery slope. <laughs> Let's move on swiftly from this gentleman here. I can change my density, you know. Just, <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> uh, gentleman in the uh, front row, thank you. Question for, uh, for Joss. Um, yeah. The Avengers films are like Marvel's um, Super Bowl, really. And how much of a constraint is that to you as a writer to hit certain beats, make a billion dollars? And as a follow-up, um, how far do you think the superhero genre still has to go? Well, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, if I had a, a, a key on my computer that said billion dollars, I would press it. Um, I just try to write it as well as I can. I don't really think about those things. The restrictions as I said before, are, are sometimes frustrating, sometimes very useful because the page is not so blank. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, what was the second part? How far do you think the genre still has to go? There's so many films being planned at the Well, you know, uh, the thing I, I loved about Marvel Comics is the thing I love about what Kevin Feige's doing with the Marvel Universe, which is he approaches, approaches every movie as a completely new idea, um, as a movie of some particular genre that happens to have superheroes in it. Um, he's not interested in creating a formula, he's interested in creating a universe. So uh, as long as he can stay alive, which is I think probably a few months more, um, <laughs> you know, I think uh, it, it has legs. As long as somebody who really cares is at the head, um, you know, trying to create new versions of the superhero movie and not just fall into the, a pattern, um, then it can sustain for quite a while. There's a lady here, thank you. All of you actors are very famous also for character-driven parts. And I just wonder if you approach a, a part like an Avenger differently, if it's an action movie. Do you have more fun, or is it the same kind of work? Interesting. It, it may be a little different. In an action film, there may not be as many tangible opportunities to play off of as an actor. You know. Some actors where the reality is a little more grounded, <clears throat> given the environment you're in or the characters you're playing off of, you may have something more to kind of pull from. In a movie like this, you may be 
sitting on a green screen or talking to a tennis ball. Um, but I think everyone up here has a very healthy imagination. I think everyone up here grew up running around in their backyard with a cape around their neck. So it's, it's you know, it's a different muscle. Um, but but I, I think it's a very similar approach. Nailed that one too. Well played, Cal. <laughs> yeah. Can we all agree that I'm Evans is on fire car. today? So Evans, you're on damn fire. Oh man, I'm like red. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris, you were the only one sitting around talking to a tennis ball. Um, that we, we know you it comforts you, but it's a little weird. There's a gentleman here in the fourth row. Thank you. Um, it's a question for for Mark and for Joss, really. Just kind of, I'm considering where Hulk ends up at the end of the film, which shouldn't be a spoiler for anyone here. Um, do you kind of take that? Uh, suggesting that Hulk's going to disappear for a while, or that he's going to kind of come back in a bigger way in future. Do you want to tell him? <laughs> no, it's you go. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can't. It's too amazing. <laughs> uh, there's a gentleman here in the second row on the very, very left. Thank you. Hi, I just really want to thank you guys for um, being a constant form of inspiration and escapism for me ever since I was 10, seven years ago. But uh, <laughs> also, um, I, my question is actually aimed at Jeremy. Um, I was wondering, you, you weren't too happy with the way that Hawkeye was displayed in the first film, uh, as far as it's been reported anyway. But um, I was wondering, I, I know that your part's been expanded in this film, but would there be any comic book storyline, or in fact any storyline at all that you'd like to adapt with that character? I don't really read comics, so I, I, I can't me. answer that part of it. Um, <laughs> I let writers that know what they're doing do that, and I, I, you know, I'll try to do what I gotta do. Um, yeah, and this one, I, I, I was so happy. I remember we're talking about, I'm not gonna talk about specifically what happens in this movie, but the ideas of what are in this movie. I remember sitting with, with uh, Downey and Joss and, and Ruffalo talking about like, some really cool ideas, and they were able to implement them in, in this one. It was uh, actually very, very, very exciting. And i um, very thankful for that. There's a lady in the front row. Thank you. On the left. Oh, thank God my arms were really aching. <laughs> um, I'd like to ask Paul um, about um, his character in the film, because you've been part of the Marvel Universe since Iron Man, which was the first in this little thing. Um, What's it like now being physically on screen and not just a voice? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, my friend really fancied you as the vision, which is a little bit weird. Oh, that's really odd. Um, <laughs> I'm going I'm to move over that one really quickly. It was lovely, you know, it was lovely to finally be on set with a bunch of people that I've been supposedly working with for 10 years but hadn't really met. <laughs> so, so, so that was nice. Um, it's a double-edged sword. Initially, my job was turning up at the end of the movie with the superhero power that if anything was still unclear, I could clarify it by just talking. And then it would take two hours and they'd give me a big bag of cash. And then I would, I would go home and I couldn't imagine that the contract could ever be better you know, than that. You know, uh, than that. Um, but it, it, was, it was, I mean, it was, it was a dream, honestly. Everybody was so welcoming. There were bunch of really lovely, happy, well-paid actors. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's, that's a nice environment to, to work in, you know? You, you got a you big know? bag of cash? <laughs> yeah, I got a big bag of cash. Well, you know, when I was doing the, 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 the voice, it seemed like a big bag of cash to me. Box office bonus is big bag of cash. You've done a well out of this. This is all right. Uh, we have time for one last question from a gentleman right at the very, very back. If you keep your hand up there, sir, on the, on the very, very left. On the, uh, the uh, camera podium, the camera podium. He's waving, he's waving his hands frantically. Now he's jumping up and down. He really wants to ask his question. Right at the back. Yes, yes, you. There we go, that's him. Excuse the delay. <laughs> it's uh, Tom Westerholt, uh, German Public Radio. Uh, question to Joss, uh, maybe you could uh, clean up with some, whatever rumor or hoax, uh, Last couple of days, the scene uh, at the credits, um, man cleaning the windows, Spider-Man yeah, no, in the back. That, yeah, that's not real. I don't know where that started. Uh, it is not, in fact, uh, a part of the movie, and I don't know who came up with it. Uh, we wanted to be clear that there was no uh, tag scene at the very, very end of the film, um, because after sitting through 40 minutes of credits <laughs> and not seeing anything, we thought people would become irate. So, no, I don't know where that started. And the short one? Sorry? To Robert Downey Jr. 
Short one, okay. Last one. Uh, or no? Yeah. Okay, very quick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why again uh, did your trailer park at the shooting have the same size as everybody else's trailers together again? <laughs> I read about that. Is that a question about the film? Because we want to have a question about the film, ideally. Yes. If not, we're going right. to bring it all to an end. That's it. On that definitive bombshell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much today. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, you Josh Reed, Elizabeth Olsen, Jamie Renner, <laughs> Mark Ruffalo, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans.